Hello, my name is Kant Slobodchikov. I would like to tell you about the social behavior of prairie dogs. There are five species of prairie dogs. All of the prairie dogs live in the grasslands of western central North America, and all are social. The five species are divided into two groups. The black-tail group includes the black-tail prairie dog and the Mexican prairie dog. Both of these species have black tail tips. The white-tailed group includes the Gunnison's prairie dog, the white-tailed prairie dog, and the Utah prairie dog. All three of these species have white tail tips. One major difference between the two groups is that the white tails hibernate during the winter, going down into their burrows in October or November and sleeping until around February or March. This is not true hibernation because they occasionally wake up, run around in their burrows for a day or so, and then go back to sleep again. The black tails, on the other hand, do not hibernate and are active throughout the year. All of the species are similar in their social behavior, although the black tails are somewhat more social than the white tails. They all live in colonies called towns, where they dig extensive burrow systems where they sleep. They also spend more than half of each day inside the burrows, resting and getting out of the heat, rain, cold, or wind. Each town is divided into a number of territories occupied by a group of prairie dogs. The territory might contain either a single adult male or a single adult female living alone, or an adult male and an adult female living together, or an adult male and several females living together, or several adult males and several adult females living together. All of the animals living on the territory defend their territorial boundaries against other prairie dogs living in other territories. In that sense, a prairie dog town is like a human medieval village or a human subdivision where each group's space and property is defended against other groups. The composition of the social group varies within each territory. In Gunnison's prairie dogs, and probably all of the other species as well, the composition of the social group in each territory is related to the distribution of plant food resources on that territory. Territories that have a fairly uniform distribution of resources, such as a dense grassland, tend to have territories that consist mostly of single adult males and single adult females. Territories that have a patchy distribution of plant resources, where there is a lot of open space between patches of plants, tend to consist mostly of single males and several females, or multiple males and multiple females. In some places where there don't seem to be many food plants available, prairie dogs can live by digging for seeds, which are high energy packets of food. Some people call prairie dogs prairie rats and imply that prairie dogs breed like rats and that if they were left unchecked, prairie dogs would soon take over the entire earth. But this is a myth. For one thing, prairie dogs are only distant cousins to rats. They are more closely related to tree squirrels. For another thing, prairie dogs breed only once a year. In fact, each female is only receptive for mating for only about five hours in a single day. If she misses that five hour period, she's out of luck for the next year. And because prairie dogs live for about three to five years in the wild, that is a significant chunk of her lifespan. If she mates successfully, she'll have about three to four pups and half of those do not make it through their first year of life to breed themselves. So the bottom line is that prairie dogs breed very slowly, once a year, and not at all like rats, which can breed every 30 days. Mating usually takes place underground and is difficult to observe directly. However, occasionally a male and female will mate above ground. While we can't see who mates with whom underground, we can use DNA paternity analysis technology to find out something about the mating process. DNA studies have shown that female prairie dogs have multiple paternity, just like cats. During their five-hour receptive period, they mate with multiple males. On average, a territorial male might sire only one pup with a female living on his territory, while a female's other pups are sired by males living on other territories. We can only assume that during the mating season, which is usually around February or March, everyone is too busy trying to find mates to defend their territorial boundaries. 
The pups are born around March or April, stay for about 30 days below ground in the burrows, and usually emerge above ground in early June. Both the pups and adults do frequent greet kisses. During a greet kiss, two prairie dogs come up to each other, open up their mouths, touch their mouths and their tongues together, and hold that pose for a couple of seconds. It looks just like a human kiss. The pups kiss each other a lot, and females kiss other females frequently. Less frequent are kisses between males and females, or between males and pups. When there is a kiss between a male and a female, it is usually the female who comes up to the male and kisses him. We don't really know the function of a greet kiss. Maybe it is a way of reinforcing social bonds, and maybe it just feels good, just like when we kiss. Black-tailed prairie dogs, being slightly more social than the other species, will often groom each other, just like monkeys groom each other. The other species will groom themselves, but have not been observed grooming other individuals. Most of the time, prairie dogs live peaceful lives. Males are aggressive toward other males among the whitetail group when they are setting up their territories after emerging from hibernation. There is a period of time when males are fighting until the territorial boundaries stabilize and everyone settles down. Females as well as males will defend their territorial boundaries against intruding prairie dogs, attacking them and chasing them out. But most of the time within a territory, males and females live in harmony. There is relatively little aggression among the females within a territory, and there doesn't seem to be a dominance hierarchy where one or more females are dominant over others. Just like people, prairie dog individuals have different personalities. Some are bold and inquisitive and want to see what's going on around them. Others are shy and retiring and are afraid of anything that is happening in the colony. So prairie dogs and people have a number of traits in common. They both live in social groups and the group composition varies depending on resources. They stake out ownership of their own piece of land and defend it against intruders. They spend a lot of time kissing each other. They have different personalities and they live in relative harmony with their social groups. Sadly, prairie dogs are decreasing in numbers and today we have fewer than 2% of the prairie dogs we had 100 years ago. The Mexican prairie dog is listed as endangered, the Utah prairie dog is listed as threatened, and environmental groups are petitioning the federal government to list the other species as threatened or endangered as well. Although prairie dogs have a lot of traits that we share, our activities might drive them to extinction in the foreseeable future. If you would like to know more about prairie dogs, you can find out a lot more information in the book, Prairie Dogs, Communication and Community in an Animal Society, if you go to my website, www.konslobotchikov.com, you can find a link to that book.